Wonderful to be here with all of you and really excited to see the SaaS product economy booming in India. And so today I want to share some of the trends we're seeing in global SaaS. And I think you'll see it's a really exciting opportunity for SaaS product builders, entrepreneurs in India and around the world. And at G2, we are building the world's largest SaaS and software marketplace. And so we gain a lot of data and insight into what's happening in the world of SaaS. And from that data and from that insight, I want to share what we're seeing in the subscription economy. So today I'm going to share the state of the global market. Where is the subscription economy heading? And hopefully you all can see my slides. Could I get a confirmation? Um, but I will, I will keep going. So thank you. Great to be here with you. A little bit about me. So I've been a SaaS entrepreneur now for over 20 years. Started my first SaaS company all the way back in 1999 at the tail end of the dot-com era. And that company was called Big Machines, which was a sales SaaS configuration and quoting app. And that company eventually was successful. It was acquired by Oracle. And then we decided to build another SaaS CPQ company, another configuration price and quoting app, and that was acquired by Salesforce. So we built two SaaS winners. And that really inspired us to build G2 because we thought as SaaS entrepreneurs, it was too hard to sell our product. It was too hard for SaaS buyers around the world to discover the apps we were building. And with G2, we wanted to create a much more consumer-like experience where software buyers from around the world can discover great SaaS apps, and based on peer reviews, make quick buying decisions. And G2 has become the largest, most influential, trusted SaaS marketplace in the world. We have over 7 million SaaS buyers coming to G2 every month to discover and find the best SaaS apps for their business. We have over 1.5 million trusted reviews. And those are the, really is the content the SaaS buyers are looking for. They want to know what their peers think, what apps are working best for companies like theirs. And that's what they can find on G2. Yes, I was just sharing about G2 uh, yes. and having become the, the world's largest SaaS marketplace. And we're from all of that data, we're seeing a lot of insights into what's happening with global SaaS. And so I first wanted to share data on how the SaaS economy is doing globally. And overall, I think we all know this, we're part of the industry, but when we started G2 in 2012, that's when Mark Andreessen said software is eating the world. And I think he was more right than any of us imagined. And there is this longer term mega boom we're all a part of. I was lucky to start my career in software over 20 years ago, but if you look over the last 30 years, you know, our industry has grown tremendously to about being a $600 billion industry today. So already a massive industry, but I think what the investors are saying, this is only going to continue. And in the next 30 years, the industry is going to become a $6 trillion industry. So overall, I feel very lucky to be part of this industry because software is truly in the world and it's creating a ton of opportunity for software entrepreneurs around the world. And what we saw in 2021 was that SaaS software spend was even accelerated with the pandemic. And I remember when the pandemic first started, I probably, like many of you, we were very scared. I remember in April 2020, when the pandemic first started, I think a lot of our customers were also very fearful at G2. We mainly sell to software marketers. And a lot of them initially were canceling their agreements, cutting back spend. And I think for a couple of months, there was a lot of fear in our whole industry. But then I think we were really lucky where by June, it became clear that software SaaS was more needed than ever. And so overall, the industry in 2021 is projected to grow 21% to 145 billion. And next year, again, grow almost 20% or 18% all the way to 172 billion. So I feel very lucky. And I think we're all very lucky to be part of this global industry. And why did SaaS spend continue growing? I think in hindsight, what was clear, and we saw this data on G2.com early on, but right when the pandemic started in March 2020, we saw a tremendous surge in global SaaS buyer traffic, where traffic was up 46% that quarter. And you could see 
not surprisingly, all of these remote work collaboration categories were really driving it, where all of a sudden the searches for webinar software were up 459%. Not surprisingly, video conferencing up 386%, virtual classrooms. So all of these technologies all of a sudden were needed as the whole world shifted remote. I think all of us in tech, we already had Zoom or we had Microsoft Teams, but the reality is a lot of businesses, a lot of schools didn't. And so that all of a sudden created a, a massive demand for digital software, and it really helped accelerate our whole industry. <clears throat> and what's driving this long term is that businesses are buying more and more software. And I think the beauty of SaaS now as a business in any industry you're in, you can find verticalized applications that are built just for you. So not just the horizontal apps like video conferencing or messaging like Slack, but now there's purpose-built apps for every industry. And I think many of them are built in India, but there've also been great examples in the US like Viva, you know, which only serves pharma. And I think now they've built almost a hundred billion dollar market cap company just serving one vertical. So reality is businesses are buying more and more apps. And you can see here on the left at G2, we also have an app called Track that helps track SaaS apps, SaaS usage, SaaS spend for many mid-sized companies. And you can see since we've been building that product, the number of applications used by small mid-sized companies has doubled. Now, the average company is using over 120 apps. I know at G2, we actually run almost 200 apps. We're about 500 employees. So I think every business is just using more and more SaaS. Also in the enterprise, it's even more dramatic. This was data from Netscope, but I think the average large enterprise now is running 1,295 apps and that only continues to grow also about 10% per year. And what's really driving that is every team now in every company has their own apps. On average, this is Netscope data, but marketing in a large enterprise has 120 apps, HR has 100 apps, 87 collaboration apps, and it just goes on and on because every team now can also find purpose-built apps that make them more and more productive. And what's also very exciting for us SaaS entrepreneurs, SaaS valuation multiples are near record highs. And this is, you know, the valuations by quarter, but I think the most recent quarter for the public SaaS companies on average, 13.2 times ARR times a recurring revenue. So valuations are pretty amazing. And you can see that, you know, the, the really big leaders, the companies like Snowflake, Okta, Big Commerce, the companies that are growing really fast, you know, they're actually valued at well over 15 times their recurring revenue. And so it's just a great time to raise capital. And because I think the investors are really looking to fuel more and more of this global growth. So overall, the global industry is very exciting, but we also want to look at what's happening in Indian SaaS market. And I think what's exciting, the demand within India is even faster than the global growth. So you can see here, Indian SaaS spend is, you know, also grew 21%, but I think last year it grew 33%, expected to grow 22%. So SaaS also within India by Indian customers is growing dramatically, but it is still only about 1% of the global market. If you look at this, you know, 2 billion versus the almost you know, 200 billion spent globally. So I think that also means for most Indian SaaS entrepreneurs, India presents an exciting market to start in, but I think to become really big to capture the global market, there's a lot of opportunity to go international. <clears throat> and on G2, we also see India continuing to be the fastest growing region. This is our buyer traffic, software buyers. And India, you know, grew the fastest in terms of the traffic by region, up 48%. Overall, Asia is growing very fast, but really exciting to see, you know, all of the acceleration in the Indian market. And at G2, we also rate all the software sellers. And we published this list at the beginning of 2001 in February. So based on the reviews, the market presence scores, all the data we have on G2, we rated the top Indian software sellers. And I think the leaders you're probably all familiar with, companies like Freshworks, Chargebee, but many great Indian SaaS vendors. And this is based on your reviews, your momentum on G2, as well as on other sites like LinkedIn and Google. And we'll be publishing it again next year. And what's also really exciting is that there have been breakaway winners now from Indian SaaS companies, two that I'm sure you all know well, Freshworks and Chargebee. But they have, it was really a breakthrough year. 
And uh, I think a lot of you, I know Garish has been a speaker at this conclave before, but obviously just an amazing entrepreneur starting his company in Chennai, but now has truly built a global leader. And I think last I checked over a $9 billion valuation and just did an incredible IPO. But you can also see Fresh Desk alone, one of the Freshworks products has almost 2,500 reviews. So Freshworks has also used customer reviews, global validation to help build their brand in the US and globally. And also Charge B, another amazing Indian success story with Krish, their founder. I was recently on a panel with him, but just amazing what they've done at Charge B. You know, now also having built a unicorn and just driving incredible growth and also with hundreds of happy reviews on G2 to help build global trust. So just really exciting, I think, to see Indian SaaS entrepreneurs really starting to build breakthrough and build global leaders. The challenge, though, I think the global SaaS market is increasingly crowded. So I think there are entrepreneurs around the world now trying to capture this opportunity. And what we see on G2, there's just more and more software SaaS products listed every year. There's over 100,000, I think at last count, almost 120,000 product listings now on G2. That's growing 20% every year. So there's 20,000 new apps being listed, being created in now over 2,000 different categories. And I think the challenge that it creates is there's over 100 different products listed in almost all of our mature categories. And so I think the challenge for you as an entrepreneur becomes, how do you break through that noise? And this, what does this number mean? 0.005, one in 20,000. Those are the odds of actually building a unicorn like Krish and Garish have done. So it is very, while the opportunity is there, I think to really have that kind of breakthrough success, it's still very rare. And I think we also looked up at least in the US your odds of getting hit by lightning are better. I think those are one in 16,000. And so what can you do to break through that noise and build that next global winner? And we believe the key is really to be able to stand out and really win the trust and the awareness of global software buyers if you really wanna build a big global company. And the reality is the challenge we all face, SaaS buyers tend not to trust sales and marketing. I've always been a SaaS entrepreneur. I've always been out there selling marketing products, but the reality is most buyers don't trust us. We did a survey G2 saying that only 6% of software buyers trust sales. And those of you in marketing can't feel too much better because it's only 7%. And I do think as a result, our industry is often over-marketed products and then sometimes under-delivered to the marketing hype. And so that's saying 75% of marketers or sellers are finding it harder to gain the prospect's trust. And 65% believe their job is getting harder and harder. And I think all of us in entrepreneurs building companies, we're all in sales and marketing. And so how do you win the trust? And, you know, we love this quote from Brian Halligan, great SaaS entrepreneur, co-founder, CEO of HubSpot. And what he says is, you know, who do people trust? They trust their peers. And that's why I think HubSpot has also always been very excited about the G2 model. They have thousands of reviews. I think uh, this was for their marketing product, almost 6,000 reviews, but they've always been in the mindset that they want marketers to tell the story for them. And they believe that's how you gain trust is from one marketer to another. And whatever industry you're in, whatever function you're selling to, we believe that's the key. Buyer trust ultimately is the ultimate moat. And when we also surveyed SaaS buyers, they say what they're looking for increasingly is peer reviews. They're looking for advice from trusted peers and colleagues. And that's where they're going to go to figure out what app they really want to buy. And now what are the recent trends in SaaS buying? At G2, we just did a SaaS buying survey for 2021 that we just launched at the SASTER conference in San Mateo a couple months ago. And some of the interesting trends first where do SaaS buyers prefer to make their purchases and i was just in las vegas this week just came back from the amazon reinvent conference aws and it's just an amazing company the momentum i think aws now is doing 70 billion a year in revenue and they're growing 40 percent, which is just mind-boggling they're adding 30 billion in new cloud revenue every year so that ecosystem's just exploding and I think one of the big trends they're saying we're also partnering partnering with the aws marketplace but more and more SaaS buyers, cloud buyers are buying apps through third-party marketplace. It's already up to 22% buying on AWS marketplace, Azure marketplace, Google cloud, Red Hat marketplace. So that's one big trend we're seeing. And I think also an opportunity for all of you, some of you may already be doing it, but in addition to selling directly, 
listing your product on some of these marketplaces. And G2 reviews now are also syndicated to the AWS marketplace, to the Azure marketplace, to the Red Hat marketplace, because we also want to help you stand out on those marketplaces. The other amazing thing is SaaS buyers are willing to move very fast. And in our survey, 54% of SaaS buyers say they can you know, buy, make over $20,000 purchasing decisions in less than three months. And so I think it is a great opportunity to capture that. And buyers also are saying they're buying more and more apps you know, in the coming year. And these were just individual buyers, individual departments, but 64% of them are planning on buying five more apps just for their part of the business. And I just want to leave you with this. We do see buyers relying more and more on user reviews to make confident buying decisions. In our survey, 86% of buyers said they will consult peer review sites and 60% are then more confident in making quicker purchasing decisions. And so I think it's a really exciting opportunity for you to quickly validate your apps you know, as you launch them to the global market. And so I just wanted to close by saying thank you. And we're really excited to also be part of the Indian SaaS ecosystem. At G2, we actually have over 125 employees now also in India. We have a team in Bengaluru. We had acquired a company called Siftery, built by two Indian SaaS entrepreneurs. That's now our G2 track product. So we're very excited to be part of your ecosystem. And I also want to thank Prasanna from Upeka for inviting me to join you all. And I'm also a supporter of Upeka. And so I hope to hear from you and... We hope to help many more of you have global success launching your SaaS products. So thank you and uh, really appreciate you having me. Mm -hmm.